Welcome to the first tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can pull data from Facebook, uh, map it to some tabular structure, and then append it to a spreadsheet. So let's get started. At first, uh, I like building the or selecting the nodes that I want to use. Uh, and in this case, I'm simply going to right click Add Node, and I will just search for Insights. Um, so in this case, we want to pull the Facebook Insights um, here, and it's the, the fourth version of this node. Um, you can see there are a bunch of different fields here that I can uh, work with. Um, we have the Add Account field um, and a bunch of other settings that we can go through in a second. Uh, in order to add data to a spreadsheet, I, of course, uh, need a spreadsheet node. So I'm just going to go over here, Spreadsheets, um, and I want to use the Append Google Spreadsheet Rows node. This uh, may take a second uh, to show up on your screen if you have as many uh, spreadsheets connected as I do. Uh, for most people, it should be uh, significantly faster. Um, so what we can see now is that we have uh, we have some data here, uh, some insights, and we have the append spreadsheet rows, uh, which takes in three different inputs. So the spreadsheet one, um, we have a range, um, and then we have rows. And as you can see, if I wanted to now pass the insights through here to the rows, you can see that I can't do that. And the reason for that is that we haven't converted this these insights, these Facebook insights, into something that actually makes sense um, for uh, the append Google Spreadsheet Rules node to understand. Um, so in order for that to work, we need something called a mapping node. Uh, so we have two, um, two over here. So um, the, the, the relevant one ones would be either map any to table or map table rows to any. So they kind of work in reverse ways. Uh, I'm going to choose map uh, any to table. You can see that there are a few different ones here that kind of help us do this. But the most important one that you'll be using is map any to table. Cool. So what we can see now already is that we have the insights data. And we can see that we can actually pass it over here to the data. Um, and we have rows over here. And we can pass that to the rows. Uh, so generally, our uh, flow will be we will be starting with fetching the insights, um, then we'll be mapping the data, uh, and then we'll be appending it to a spreadsheet. And once we've done that, we're done. Um, of course, we could be running this on repeat uh, with the delay node, um, but I'm just going to do this one time. And one thing that we may want to do additionally is uh, clear uh, the data beforehand. So um, right now there is no node called overwrite, but there is one called clear and append, which together they basically overwrite um, a tab, for example. So what you can see now is that I will uh, disconnect this part over here. And so this will be the order that we'll be following. Um, cool. So we'll have fetch the data, map it to tabular data, clear the spreadsheet, add to the spreadsheet. Um, the clearing part we could pretty much do anywhere in the workflow, um, but I like to keep the, uh, the 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 time that the data is deleted and therefore the tab is empty as close as uh, short as possible. Cool. Um, as you can see, we have spreadsheet ID and range twice. Um, so if I don't want to enter um, this twice, which you know will be the same uh, object in uh, both cases, um, I can simply use a um, select spreadsheet node so i'm going to right click again and add a node go over to google sheets and you can see that we already have the append and the clear google spreadsheet rows node and i can also choose the select google spreadsheet id node over here cool um, so i will connect these here because what i want to do is i want to be able to uh, pass uh, basically use the exact same uh, spreadsheet ID and range over here. All right. Um, so we can see that uh, we're basically passing this to two different nodes over here. All right. So we have everything that we need. Uh, we now need to choose where to actually get data from and also where to add the data. So I'm going to create a new spreadsheet.
cool. And I'm going to add this to the Fetch Insights tutorial. And I like calling my uh, data tab raw, where I just export the data. Uh, it could also be called, for example, import or something like that. And if I, uh, this is the, the spreadsheet that I need to create pre, uh, before. And then in my select spreadsheet, uh, Google spreadsheet uh, node, I can now start searching for it. Um, if I just created this uh, after creating this node, I may have to click refresh over here to refetch all spreadsheets that I have access to. Again, if you're like me, this may take a second, um, but then it should be available. Um, we can usually find these, uh, the spreadsheets either by name or by the ID, I'm just gonna copy the name over here and put this here. And we can see now that this is the spreadsheet that we have selected. So I'm going to save it. Good, and then we need to choose a range. So in this case, I have two options. I'm just gonna choose the import one here, um, but we could also specify a range like uh, A4 to C4 or something like that. And then we would be adding this uh, in a particular range. So in this case right now, we will just choose the whole tab All right, so we can see now that the second part of the automation is already done. We have the spreadsheet selected. We're gonna clear uh, the whole tab and then we're gonna add the rows that we get from the table um, uh, mapper. <clears throat> so what we actually need to do is we need to say, what data do we want to map? Uh, and in order to do that, I'm quickly going to just get some data and uh, show you how to do that. So uh, as you can see, there are a bunch of defaults uh, preset already in this case. And when we go over here to the uh, pencil symbol, we can see that really only one of these sockets uh, is required. So the add account IDs is required. We can see that we have nothing here, um, but that they're also not necessarily required. So I'm just going to set one add account and I'm gonna choose the kitchen demo account and save. And now we can see that uh, we are actually ready to run this automation. We can see that the date preset says yesterday and the time increment we're choosing is all days, which means that we don't split the data uh, up even further. Um, for example, if I wanted to choose a different date preset like last year, which I'm going to do uh, because we haven't run any ads this year in this account, um, we can see now that I would be able to choose a time increment here that, for example, gets uh, monthly data or uh, weekly data. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to choose monthly. I can also set an increment in days from 1 to 90. So in this case, if I choose 1, I would get daily a daily breakdown. If I choose 90, I would get a breakdowns uh, in increments of 90. That's why it's called increment. <clears throat> cool. Uh, but I'm just going to choose monthly over here. Um, then, as you may know, you can choose uh, attribution uh, windows for what, what data set you want to pull. Uh, we can choose the level on which this should run, uh, account level or campaign level. I'm going to choose campaign level. Uh, ads set and ads are also possible. Whether we want to use unified attribution settings, this is relevant uh, for iOS since iOS 14. And then we need to choose what fields we actually want to get data for. Uh, so any um, any actions that happen off Facebook, so in an app or on a website or something like that, um, they usually hide under this actions and action values uh, uh, field. Um, so if we uh, add actions and action values, we will actually get a list of all actions that have uh, uh, that have taken place. Um, and I'm just going to choose account ID, account name, action values, actions, impressions, spend. And I'm also going to get campaign level information. So campaign ID and campaign name. And I'm just going to save this. Cool. Uh, you can see we have three more uh, settings over here. We have the action report time, which uh, per default should always be set to conversion. Impression used to be relevant before iOS 14. Um, and then we can choose to have a breakdown as well. So for example, we can choose to have a country breakdown um, and some other breakdowns as well. Not every breakdown can be combined with uh, each other. Uh, you can usually replicate whatever is available in Ads Manager, but nothing beyond that. Um, cool. So uh, I'm just going to quickly run this one time. So I'm just going to trigger this node individually and see what data we can get. Um, it is, of course, possible for the request to time out if we simply request for too much data, and then you would need to break up the request uh, in a few small steps, run multiple uh, requests like this one. In this case, we can see that we get uh, two-dimensional um, uh, objects back, so a list of inside objects. This is what they look like, and we can see that this is now the month of 
uh, June for this campaign. So we have basically buckets of or, or, or objects that uh, have a data for one month for one campaign because this is the type of breakdown and level that we chose. Um, cool. So if I now want to add this to a table, um, I need to map this over here. So I'm just going to put out the campaign name the spend and the date start because the date start is really enough for me to know what month it is. I'm just going to choose uh, this over here. I can choose a schema. Uh, schema uh, allows us to uh, pre-select uh, any fields that we might want to uh, uh, use. So in this case, uh, we have here a list of Facebook insights. And um, if this is called um, it, when you look at this data over here and you see it starts with this type of bracket and then we have these objects uh, with curly brackets that are separated by a comma, we know it's a list. Uh, and in this case, um, we know that these are insights because they're actually even called insights. So, um, cool, we have Facebook inside list. Um, then we can choose to add a header, yes or no. I'm gonna say yes. And then I will also uh, map this now. So here you can see that I have a bunch of different things pre-selected, uh, so I'm just going to use campaign name, I'm going to use date start, and I'm just going to add the spend. Cool. Um, cool, so you can see now that we have three, uh, three fields mapped, and I'm just going to run this now. Um, Cool, we can see the automation has stopped and we can uh, preview each uh, part here. So we can see here, once again, we have this uh, set of insights over here. Now we have some rows objects. So you can see this is one row object and it has some additional information. Um, it also has a range where this is gonna land. It says, yes, this is a header and this is what the header looks like. And then we can see the actual values popping up over here. So this is the first row below the header, the second row below the header, etc. And we can see that this is passed here. Um, and we can just double check and voila. Yes, this did actually work. So we have our campaign name over here. We have a date start, a date spend, uh, sorry, uh, not date spend, just spend. So we know that this is kind of the spend uh, for the month. And I could now set this up to update once a day, for example, and this would um, always just overwrite this data set. And I could maybe in another tab or in a Google data studio now start building a report based on this. Cool. So just to reiterate, what did we do? Uh, we started by choosing the nodes that we, were relevant for us. So we knew we wanted to add something to a spreadsheet. We knew we wanted to get some Facebook data and uh, we had to somehow convert the data from, uh, you know, from, from our kind of objects or insights objects to something that uh, actually looks like tables. And so we used the map, en map any to table rows. Um, and uh, one thing to keep in mind is that when you want to access specific actions. So let's say we really want to look at, you know, how many link clicks did we have? How many landing page views did we have? How many purchases did we have, et cetera? In order to get that data, we usually have to choose actions and action values. Uh, so actions would be just the, you know, conversion event happening and action values would mean the contributing value. So revenue, for example, if, you, uh, if we have a purchase event. Um, so if I want to get any of those, I need to choose actions and action values and then we will get back any actions that actually uh, took place. And this, in my case, is maybe eight or nine different ones. Uh, and for others, these, the, there may be 200 different um, uh, actions, uh, including any custom conversions. As you can see here, we have three types of custom conversions that triggered um, that in your events manager, you can figure out um, what each actually means. Cool, that's it. Hope this was helpful. Um, let me know some feedback.